Centering clay on the potter's wheel is one of the most difficult processes to learn when throwing pots. And even in my other videos that focus on centering clay, there's always a few things I miss. And so, in this video, I'll go over five, perhaps more subtle tips for when you're centering clay on the potter's wheel. But before I can get started with those, I first have to prepare the clay I'll be working with. This is a high iron stoneware body that contains a bit of grog, which means it isn't perfectly smooth. It's a quality I prefer when throwing and trimming pots, as it gives the material some tooth and some haptic feedback, which other very smooth clays don't offer. I divide the clay into five lumps and wedge them thoroughly. This process removes air pockets from the clay and makes the texture even throughout. The first tip is to work with clay that's the right consistency. It should be soft and easily malleable and not overly firm like this piece of clay, which I can still indent if I press my thumb into it, but to try and throw with this lump of clay would be completely impossible and potentially dangerous as the sheer amount of force needed to center it could very well lead to you injuring yourself. So if you can't wedge it, then you definitely shouldn't be throwing with it. Even attempting to knead clay like this will cause you to hurt your wrists. So if you have clay like this, you really have just two options. You can either dry the entire piece out until it's bone dry, which I normally do by placing it on the radiator and then slake it down in water and recycle it like normal. Or it can be cut into many thin slices and then layered with much softer clay, which can then all be thoroughly wedged into a softer, more usable material. It can take some time to fully blend it. And even then you need to make sure it's soft enough to actually throw with. In this case, it still felt slightly on the firm side, but I should be able to throw a pot with it. And you can see that in this comparison with two lumps of clay with the firm piece on the right as I push my thumbs into them with the same amount of pressure. And if your clay acts like what you see on the right, you will find it more difficult to center, especially if you're a beginner. But let's try throwing with each to see what happens. Here's the firm lump which doesn't stick down as securely as the softer stuff. And when centering it, not only do I have to use much more pressure, but I need to move it around a lot more too in order for it to feel centered. The stoneware doesn't meld together in quite the same way and it takes coning it up and down four or five times until it feels like it's ready to be turned into a pot. This process took about a minute and a half and for a piece of clay this size, that's way too long. And if you are just starting to learn how to throw on the potter's wheel, clay this hard will actually make that process more difficult. But with that being said, firm clay like this can be really useful for throwing certain shapes with as the clay keeps its strength for longer before it becomes saturated with water and weakens. So it does have its uses, especially when it comes to lifting the pot away as it holds its shape just that much better. The previous firm lump of clay took one and a half minutes to center. So let's see just how much faster that process is with a soft lump. It already just feels so much easier to work with. There's less strain on my left wrist and even just by moving it around a tiny bit, the material feels like it's meshed together much better. And it only took 20 seconds to center, which is considerably faster and it was far less physically demanding. So if you are just learning how to make pots on the wheel, go for the softer stuff. It'll make your life easier. The next tip is to keep the sides of your lump of clay straight. I do this by keeping my hands that clasp the clay from the outside vertical like this. You don't want your hands to slope in like so, as doing so will create a shape that's harder to open up and throw into a pot, as the highest point is in the middle of the lump, which makes opening up the hollow and forming the internal base harder as you're having to move more material. You also inevitably end up wasting some clay as it slopes gradually into the metal. So this is the shape we have to avoid. But if you find your lump of clay is this shape, squeeze in firmly with your little fingers from around the outside, then make sure the fingers and palm of at least one of your hands is nice and straight, like so. And then you can push the clay down from above against the profile of your hand. And our aim is to create a puck shape like this with a flattish top and flat sides. Doing so makes opening up 
and pulling up the walls of clay far more simple as the material will naturally be in a better location for those next steps. So remember, we want a flat top with flat sides and if you have a small groove around the bottom from where your little finger pressed in to stop the clay from spreading out onto the metal, then that also doesn't matter whatsoever. The next tip will help you keep your hand steady and level as you're centering. Often, throughout this process, you might notice that one of your hands, or both of them, are wavering up and down ever so slightly, despite the lump of clay feeling like it's centered. This is usually because of some leftover clay on the wheel head underneath your hand. And when it's uneven, like it is here, it causes your hands to wobble as the material undulates beneath them. And well, how are you ever going to center a lump of clay perfectly when your hands are moving? So all I do in this case is use my thumb to scrape away much of this material so that it's even all the way around and thus the clay here has no influence on my hands. Another bit of advice for when you're centering clay is that you should never push your hands down against the metal so that you feel your skin scrape against it. Often you can hear when you're pressing down too hard and you can see residue left over from the aluminium on your hand. If you keep doing this, it will wear away your skin, thus making the process of throwing pots almost impossible as it hurts too much. Instead, I let my hand hover by about a millimetre or so, gliding over a thin layer of slip that naturally accumulates here. Additionally, if you feel like your clay is becoming very sandy all of a sudden, it's because you're spending too long centering it, and you'll literally wear away the outer layer of clay, revealing more and more sand, which, like you may guess, grinds against your skin, causing irritation and pain. But I should mention that this only happens with clays that contain grog. But if you're using a particularly smooth clay body, you shouldn't run into this issue. My fourth bit of advice is the importance of wheel speed. When centering clay and throwing pots, if you keep the wheel on full speed from the very beginning, it can make the process harder as the clay really wants to fling itself off. But once under control, it will spin with more stability. But normally, as I work, I alter the speed at certain points to suit whatever my hands are doing on the wheel. When centering, I generally spin the wheel quite quickly, but I never go at full speed. And at the start, for the first few moments, I take it slowly just to get the clay into the right shape, and then I ramp it up. With time, changing the speed of the wheel really becomes a subconscious act. But when first learning how to make pots, it's something you're thinking about all the time. I think generally it's better to go a bit more slowly than you think. But at the same time, you definitely don't want to go too slow, as once again, doing so only makes the process harder than it need be. As demonstrated with this lump of clay, which I'll try and center with the wheel spinning really slowly. Normally, I'll be going at twice or three times the speed for the initial stage, and then I'd even speed up just a tiny bit more to define the shape and then when I cone up and down, I tend to slow it down as the clay rises higher. By going really slowly like this, it's much more difficult to apply constant pressure, as the clay doesn't feel like it's pushing back. It inevitably leans to one side, and that means the off-center side then hits back into my palm, and I have to readjust my hand. So, overall, going too slowly is actually more difficult than if the wheel's spinning too quickly. Not to mention, going at a snail's pace like this will mean it takes you forever to throw pots. And when you're learning to center and pull up the walls, what's really helpful is just having dozens and dozens and dozens of goes at it, quickly, one after another, so that you can gain an understanding of the material you're working with to see what its limitations are. And by working a bit more quickly at the start, you'll make more pots, have more successes and more failures, which means you should get a grasp of the centering process just that bit faster. This is the speed I normally work at. You'll notice that I slow down ever so slightly when I change the positions of my hands to readjust them, fetch water or a tool. Or when I compress it down too, I again decrease the rate at which it spins. I then speed up as I make the hole in the middle and then I keep the speed consistent as I pull the walls up, together with moving my hands at an even rate. As if I were to suddenly change the wheel speed, or move my hands much more quickly, then that part of the wall where they are will be thrown differently 
from the rest, which isn't ideal, as what I'm aiming for is an even cross-section from bottom to top. The final tip for centering clay is to keep the material moving. If I were to wet the clay and just leave my hands braced around it, like this, allowing the clay to just flow beneath them as I press my hands onto it, then I won't center it nearly as quickly compared to if I move the clay around quite dramatically, be that coning it up and down, a process that helps align the particles of clay so they knit together and become more plastic and therefore easier to throw with. If I have one lump of clay which I don't cone, compared to another which is coned up and down three or four times, I can feel the difference in the material. It runs more smoothly beneath my hands, and it's easier to control when the lump of clay is opened up and the walls are pulled ever higher. There's sometimes, no matter how much you wedge a piece of clay on the table before it's thrown, there could be something just not quite right with it. So, if your goal is to achieve a more centered lump of clay and throw better pots, coning the clay and keeping it moving, before you settle on that finalized puck shape can be beyond helpful. So, once again, I have my hand flat around the outside. I use the edge of my hand to flatten the top and I scrape away any excess from around the bottom that could influence the movement of my hand that's clasped around the lump of clay. And sometimes just moving it ever so subtly in and out like this can go a long way in helping the piece of clay become truly centered. All of this could feel like it's a lot to remember. And when you're learning, it really is. There are so many steps, and not every pottery tutor teaches this process in the same way. After all, our hands are different shapes, so what might feel right and comfortable for one person may not necessarily work for somebody else. But hopefully the tips in this video will help you center lumps of clay more easily, and if you'd like to watch an even longer, even more in-depth video about the centering process, I've made a number of other videos from a more broad perspective such as how to position and move your hands, and what we're looking for in a centered lump of clay. I'll include links to both of those videos in the description below, as they may answer many of the questions you still have. Centering clay is not easy, but it's something you need to tackle when learning to throw, as it underpins everything. Yet, at the same time, you need to understand that your centering will become better over time. It's not a skill that you just complete, and suddenly you can center any lump of clay no matter its size. Instead, it's a skill you can build upon and get faster at. And even now, after 15 years of centering and throwing pots, I can still see improvements here and there that seemingly creep out of nowhere. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you'd like to see more like it in the future, or if there's any other throwing subject you'd like me to cover, leave a comment and let me know. Until then, thank you so much for taking your time to watch. And I'll see you next time.